What is up everyone and welcome back to the channel where I cover everything from the latest in the world of AI and tech to how you can monetize and take advantage of all the AI buzz. So today I'm going to compare these four amazing text to image generative AI tools in an epic showdown for the title of generative AI art champion. So if you are a digital artist or a content creator or just someone looking to learn and explore the realm of AI generated art, then this video is for you. Also subscribe and like this video because you are awesome and thank you for doing that. So as we begin, let's get the criteria sorted out on which we are going to assess these tools. We're going to look at five specific categories and see how each of these tools do in each of these categories. So let the battles begin. All right, so the first category is AI generated image and quality. So this is all about how each of these tools can take text prompts to generate the best quality image. We will try to keep the same prompt across each of these tools. All right, so here we are in Leonardo AI and I'm running this prompt looking for a scenic country landscape with this charming small house in the center. And you can see that Leonardo has brought up some amazing images. All of them are bright and colorful and all of them actually look really good. Now let's take the same prompt and run these in Dream Studio and these are the images that have been produced through Dream Studio and you can see that they're slightly different but yet colorful and look really good and something that I can actually use. And when I run the same prompt on Mid Journey, the artistic direction that it has taken is so different. Each of these images looks so different, more cartoonish, more anime-ish, uh, but they're all really good. So again, really good representation of what I'm really looking for. And now we'll take the same prompt and run it in the Adobe Photoshop beta and see what it generates. Now Photoshop's really generated a photo and not really an artwork. And when it comes to the prompt itself and what we were looking for, it has generated what we want. But again, comparing to what we just used um, with respect to the other tools, this response and the result is really underwhelming. Now let's go try some other prompts here. We're going to generate an illustration of Einstein with Leonardo. And you can see that these images look really similar. The color palettes are same, uh, really. And again, there's some text that it is bringing in, but the result look pretty cool in terms of the attempt that we have. Let's do the same thing in Dream Studio. And you know, Dream Studio, at least we have at least different images and the palette looks slightly different. Again, the results are not really bad. Um, the, the direction Dream Studio has taken is pretty different. I will run the same thing with, uh, you know, Photoshop and let's see what the results look like. And actually, it seems like there is a guidance violation here that we have. So it seems like when you're looking for an Einstein image, Photoshop really isn't that great. But when it comes to vectorized art, it has generated a really good, uh, you know, art here. Uh, but it's not exactly what we were looking for. Now, when it comes to Mid Journey, Mid Journey has done a really great job of taking the prompt and producing some amazing images. And each of them are something that I can upscale and start using. Overall, I'm really happy with the images produced through Mid Journey and Leonardo. But again, these are artistic choices, so you can actually choose whichever platform is best for you. All right, so the second category is control over output. And this is where we're going to compare the ability of these tools to provide control over the output type and the styles that are getting generated. So with Leonardo, as much as you get the ability to put a prompt, you can actually select different types of models. You can select a specific Leonardo style if you want it or if you don't want. You can also add negative prompts as to what are the different things that you don't really want the image to generate. And then on the left side, you have options to select the number of images that are produced or other features like, you know, what kind of contrast do you want? Some other options such as dimensions. And if you want to change other things with respect to the settings, you have all of that available within the browser of the you know Leonardo AI tool. Now Dream Studio by Stability AI also has tunable settings on the left hand side. You can actually select different styles for the images that you want produced. You can also add negative prompts and there are other settings available like uploading images as well as settings to change dimensions and others. However, these are all the UI settings that it provides and it's missing some of those other capabilities that we saw in Leonardo.ai. But again, still not a bad idea to have an ecosystem of experience where you can actually change settings and dimensions everything on the you know browser itself so that's pretty good now when it comes to mid journey there are lots of settings available and those settings can be seen here in the documentation you can select you know different parameters you can change aspect ratio if you want you can change the quality you can change the styles you can have different tiles you can use different versions the only thing that you have to be aware of is that it all has to be added in the text prompt 
instead of having a UI experience. So that's one of the biggest uh, differences when it comes to Midjourney versus what you have with Leonardo or Gene Studio. It doesn't have a UI based interface. But when it comes to Photoshop, uh, what we are seeing here is that we really don't have you know, a flexibility available to change the style of images that are getting generated. It's sort of like a black box where you are actually putting information and it produces something that you can either use or maybe you cannot use. The third category is post result control. And this is where we're going to compare the ability to see how these images that are generated can be improved, modified or even edited as per your needs within these tools. So when it comes to Leonardo AI, it has something called AI Canvas where you can actually generate an image. So first you have control over what you are producing. Say here we are doing a city at night and it's generating an image. Now that the image has been produced, we can actually select which one we want to stick with. So I'm gonna select the first one that I like, so we'll just accept that. And now we can actually start expanding this image by doing something what is called add similar to what this image looks like. So we're basically expanding this image continuously by actually generating a content filler. And that looks really good because now we can select same style and expand this image out as much as we want which is amazing that the ai is able to understand the context and kind of expand the image or elaborate it the way you want it it also has some other features on the left where you can put mask and kind of edit stuff out or remove different things again the overall experience with leonardo ai is definitely not bad so when it comes to post image control i definitely feel leonardo ai just offers a lot more here than i was expecting so that's pretty good now when it comes to stability ai i can actually select the image and then go in and try to edit it there is an option to kind of expand this but when you click on that edit option there is an option for you to have an eraser with this eraser you can actually separate or remove things that you really don't want from an image but from what i've seen so far the post editing settings and stability ai are not really good enough at this point i mean you cannot really do other things that i could do in you know leonardo at this point so definitely a little of underwhelming but it is what it is for now now with mid journey once an image has been produced there are certain options that have been now available through mid journey's 5.2 update where you can actually zoom out an actual image to 2x you can also expand it to you know 1.5x and this is one of those images that we had initially produced and now we actually zoomed it out to 2x and it actually retained the content experience that we were looking for. So that's really good that you can actually expand the image out 2x. Now, in my opinion, the star and the winner of this round is Photoshop and it was going to be. What we have done here is taken the image that we produced in Midjourney and brought it into Photoshop. And now what I'm doing here is actually context aware fill where AI is actually using the central image and then taking that context and expanding that image out to the dimensions that we have set. What you see here is an amazing image uh, produced by this expansion, this context awareness. And then you also get different variations that you can actually pick and choose from. Now you can see the clouds that have been produced. Now I'm expanding it down to the bottom of that image with more flowers. Again, this is fantastic. I would say a combination of Midjourney and Photoshop is probably what I'm going to use. Look at that image. It's fantastic. I mean, not just the fact that you can do these variations, Photoshop also has innate capabilities to you know, change the image, change the saturation levels and to produce a better quality image by editing different things you can actually paint in this and again all the ability of Photoshop but now with the ability to actually generate context aware images. Now this is what I feel makes Photoshop way different from all these different solutions that we just looked at right now. The fourth category is cost where we are really going to assess how much does it cost to actually use these tools. So Leonardo has a free option but then again you have pricing ranging from $10 to $48 giving you different tiers to produce images as well as the flexibility that you need as per your requirements. While Stability has a pay per image kind of model where you purchase credits and then each of these credits is actually going towards processing an image that you produce. Midjourney also has a free tier as well as basic plan, standard plan and a pro plan, each ranging from $8 to $48 depending on what plan you take. Now Photoshop is provided by Adobe which is a well established company. They have the entire creative cloud available or you can pick up just Photoshop for $21. If you are a student or teacher you can pick this entire creative cloud for about $20 which is pretty good. And the fifth category is user experience and platform and this is where we are going to assess and see how easy it is to navigate and use these tools on a day to day basis. 
So the Leonardo.ai platform is available through a browser. All you need is access to internet. Go and punch in your prompt and play around with different models to get the images that you want. And it's super easy. When it comes to Dream Studio, it's exactly the same. You can access dreamstudio.ai and then put your prompt in and it's accessible through the website. And it's simple, you don't have to download anything on your system. The platform is available on the browser itself. Now Photoshop is available as a program that you will have to download on your system, either Windows, Mac or Linux, and it authenticates through the Creative Cloud. So Photoshop is not really available on the web browser. You really need this program to get everything to work properly. So if you're someone who likes to work offline, then probably Photoshop would really work well for you. Now Midjourney has taken a different direction where to access the models, all you have is Discord and all you need to do is go to Discord and then type in slash imagine, enter your prompt and the images will be produced as you want. All right, everybody. So that's a wrap for today's comparison. I hope this video helps you in making an informed decision on what's really best for you. Remember that the best tool is the one that suits your needs and helps you express your creativity. And if you've liked this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more content like this. Until I see you again, stay true, stay consistent.